It's good. It's pretty refreshing. It's cold and crisp. <sighs> Maybe I'll have an A1. Or I mean an A1. He hasn't even turned the water on yet. And? <laughs> and that oop. Hi, honey. Hi. You've been listening to Books on Tape. On Compact Disc. You're an avid reader. You've read 30 plus books so far this year. It's April? Yes. Yes, um, I have. But you recently segued to books on CD. I've listened to books on CD here and there in the past. Hmm. But something I've realized lately. Well, I really like listening to podcasts. Yes. And uh, sometimes when I'm driving, I'll put a podcast on my phone and yeah. then put the phone in the cup holder. And I'll just listen to that while I'm driving. But lately what I've realized that is fun for me to do is I get um, a book on CD from the library. So an audio book. And specifically genre wise, I've been listening to a lot of like, I've been listening to true crime, Ah, nonfiction stuff. Yeah. Audio books are kind of hard for me to follow along. Yeah. But maybe because I've been listening to so many podcasts over the last five years or so. Yeah. If it's like a true story somehow it's easier for me to follow along really or to, it, i can pick up easier uh, like i listen while i'm driving to work or uh last night i drove lennox to his friend's house and just in the few minutes it took to get home i put it on and listen to it yeah. so if it's an if it's a true story yeah uh, it's easier for me to get back in and not lose place or hmm. forget who the characters are uh when it comes to podcast genre, do you listen to true crime, serial, S Town, all that stuff? Do I you do. Like that stuff? Um, I do. Yes. Uh, and but how how long are the CDs? Because your commute to work is 10, 15 minutes tops. It's about twenty minutes in the morning. So how does it do, does it take a super long time to get through a compact disc? Uh, each <laughs> the one I currently have. The CD audiobook is seven discs. Jeez. <laughs> and each disc has about 15 tracks. Holy and Toledo. they range from, you know, like two minutes to six minutes per track. Okay. Uh, so it, it takes a while. Um, it goes by so fast, though, and it's so enjoyable. Hmm. It does kind of suck that it's only CD and yeah. I can only listen to it in my car. Yeah. But it helps me to get through more books because hmm. I can... I'm reading a physical book, but I'm also listening to an audio book in my car. Right. So I'm I'm reading more, which yeah. makes me happy. Yeah. I, I, I've i tried to listen to real, uh, fact-based, well-produced uh, crime, serial crime, whatever, <coughs> uh, pods, but I just, I can't pay attention. I'm just like, what? I'm lost. <laughs> What's going on? I need visuals. Uh, I mean, and we love true crime Docs. We love yeah. documentaries about outrageous people doing outrageous things. But when it comes to audio, I just I, w- I want to listen to people chatting, like such as yourself and I right now, honey. Hmm. But you're enjoying it. I am, and you know, I I still listen to CDs. You do. The library. I I get all my books from the library, and the library has. Um, Something called Audible, I think it's called. Yes. Oh yeah. So you oh, can yeah. rent, you can get borrow books yeah. from the library and listen, yeah. like audio books, and listen on your phone. Right. But I don't know how to do that, uh, and I'm intimidated by it. So I just stick to physical books and yeah. CDs because uh. I'm uh, I'm old fashioned and technology <laughs> scares me. I'll help you, honey. <laughs> Will you? I've been watching uh, my parasocial podcast friend Leo Laporte do ads and. Uh, regale endlessly about how wonderful audible is in audiobooks uh but yeah we can totally hook that up i've actually i wanted to get a kindle uh recently uh, but they're so dang expensive like 70 80 bucks like i want a kindle i think that'd be magical and i would love to read it but uh, just you go in the library once twice a week dropping stuff off for us grabbing books for us but you know I love doing that. Oh yeah. So I kind of miss it if I. I we were supposed to go to the, to the West Sac Library today. Yeah, I was gonna drag you. Things fell apart. I was willing. <laughs> and that uh, oop. Okay, so if you're just joining us, our cat Frankie Blue Nicholas is fat again, is overweight. 
So when we got him, he was 12 pounds, uh, wild, reckless, abandoned young man. And then we didn't know what the hell we were doing. So we kept his food bowl filled to the brim, filled to the rim with brim all the time. Cause we didn't know what we were doing. We're like, just keep it full, keep it overflowing. And he ballooned to 15 pounds and then a couple of things happened. Uh, he went on a hunger strike because we went out of town for a couple of days and I know this hurts to bring it up, honey, but the wet food fiasco <laughs> where we started feeding him wet food because, hey, maybe he'll like it. And he did like it and he liked it way too much. We'd feed him at 2 a.m. He would finish. And then at 2.05 a.m., he'd come in our room and start meowing. Yeah, he want, he was relentless. He wanted wet food nonstop. And if he didn't get it, he was scratching at our carpet. Oh, yeah. He was jumping up on our headboard. Oh, my god. He was racing around the house yeah. all hours of the night. All hours of the night. Oh, my gosh. It was maddening. It was maddening. So we, went, we, we were like, okay, we need to go uh, full throttle back to the dry food. He was cut off. Cold turkey. Cold turkey. That's what I was going for. <laughs> Full throttle slash cold turkey back to the dry food. And he wouldn't eat it for days, for at least a week. Uh, and he slimmed down to a cool 11 pounds. He became super skinny. Uh, he wasn't no, no longer our chunky boy. But now I think we've reached a happy medium. We feed him. Well, we have one of those... Uh, soup spoons that you get in a Chinese restaurant for whatever reason that works for us uh, and we dole out uh, that amount of dry food mm, five times a day he's still eating way too much yeah. <laughs> way too frequently well, yeah. yeah so he's gained weight he's a giant once again he's once again our chunky boy um, and he's just getting older and he's getting furrier uh, and so like uh, he he had we, we we joked about this tuft, which is like his little groinal area <laughs> that would just, it was furry and hang and billow. The portion of his belly down near his nether regions, when yeah. he walks, it kind of like sways back yeah. and forth. Oh, yeah. And I've noticed this on other cats now yes. that I'm paying attention. Oh, yeah. yeah, totally. So we, we call it the tuft. Yeah. I don't know. Is it skin? Is it hair? Is yeah. it what? I don't know what exactly is going on there. And he's fixed, so there's no... Uh, you think that he doesn't have protrusion a penis a dink we like to say dink have you ever seen one luna claims to have seen it right ah when he when cats get neutered or fixed or whatever the heck it is yeah they don't cut off their peen okay so it's hiding it's it's i think it's just super tiny (laughs) or retracted i think when they or it's like a sword in its sheath I think when they get the surgery to not have the babies, yeah. I think it's internal or it's just like a little, ah. like they cut off where the, um, yeah, where the sperm comes out. Ah. Right? They don't cut off his dink. <laughs> Got a vasectomy. <laughs> uh, but we need we need a veterinarian to weigh in here. Yes, please, please uh, slide in our DMs. But uh, his tuft, he's gotten older. He's gotten chunkier again. Uh, Gravity's happening. Furrier. Things gravity. are sagging. Oh, yeah, girl. Tell me about it. Uh, so, but I, the name of his autobiography, when he writes one, I'm going to pitch him the title uh, From Tuft to Utter, the Frankie Blue Nicholas story, because it looks like a cow utter now. It's, I want to milk him. I want to milk that <laughs> son of a bitch whenever I see him. It's very utter like. Sway to and fro. Uh, like Biggie said, uh, the way you'll. The way you used to wiggle when your ass would jiggle, uh, but he's he's happy. Uh, he turned three recently. Um, it was his birthday, and we didn't do anything for him. But we came home from a walk. It was a weekend, and we're we're, we're just standing there. And he starts making these very odd sounds, like, <sighs> and we thought we knew something bad was going to happen, and he vomited. Yep, and then. Uh, he walked three feet one way, and then he vomited again. So on his birthday, he vomited twice onto our thick, plush Berber carpet. What a jerk. Yeah. Well, I think it's because we didn't do anything for him. <laughs> like these idiots on Instagram who put their cats in funny hats and give them a cupcake. 
<laughs> with the candle in it. Maybe that's what Frankie Blue wanted. Well, there's always next year. If he lives another year, yeah. hopefully. Yeah. Last week, uh, I woke up and my eyes were like hecka red. I, I don't know what happened. Um, they would, they didn't itch. There was no irritation. Uh, there was no pain. There was, there was nothing. It was just, they were just super red. It was, it looked like I was stoned or like <laughs> pulling an all nighter drinking. Um, very odd, disturbing, um, to say the least. And it lasted, it went, it went down a little the next day and then down, uh, it lasted about four days. Um, but I, I think Frankie Blue Nicholas, when we're not home, he goes on my pillow and he goes to town on his no-no square, dude. He gives <laughs> oh my me gosh. that old uh, red eye razzle dazzle. Why your pillow? Because he loves me. <laughs> he does love you the most. It, 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 he does. You've somehow become his favorite house family member. I feed him. I feed him 99% of the time. I clean his poop 99% of the time. He knows. Um, maybe, I, I think he's showing affection by... <laughs> Going to town on his no-no square on my pillow, but when in reality, it infected me. Thank goodness my eyes are fine now. Um, but he today he was on Luna's bed, like on her pillow. Yeah, on her pillow, and she was lying down. Frankie Blue was right next to her, and I said, "Look out for that red eye, <laughs> that uh, razzle dazzle red eye that Frankie Blue and Nicholas can dole out." And that oop scintillating segment. Uh, you took Frankie Blue. To his annual vet appointment, which involves you getting him into his cage. And we'll talk about the process, honey. You bring it up from the garage. <clears throat> and so he knows something is askew. He hates his cage. Yeah. I would too. <laughs> <laughs> Who wouldn't? <laughs> uh, and the only time we ever put him in it is when we're going to the vet. That's the only yeah. time he leaves our house. Yeah. So it's been enough times by now that he knows what it means. Yeah. So I have to be really strategic right. and lucky. Right. The only way I can get him in is if he's sleeping yeah. and I quietly set it next to him. And then before he's aware of what's happening, <laughs> yeah. I scoop him and I put him in the, that has a little hole on top yeah. so I can scoop him and drop him right in the top of it. Yeah. So that's <laughs> every time. And then I lock it as fast as I can. You also put him in there when there was a fire real close to us. Yes. Like that was madness. Yes. Right? You, evacuate evacuate that's the other the kids were here and you had to get frankie blue <laughs> the other only time that he's left our house uh but the classic uh whenever you take him to the vet he whines he cries and so i always say record him because it's so dang entertaining <laughs> yeah as soon as he's in that cage yeah. he starts crying like literally like a baby mm -hmm. and it's so funny and mm -hmm. we, we just laugh at his pain yes please play it for the people at home honey It's okay. It's okay. Is it though? <laughs> Anyways, Frankie Blue Nicholas, we love him. And that oop. So, honey, a few months ago, uh, you made. A bunch of banana bread for our neighbors and we thought this is our way to reach out and say hey we out here and even though we've been here three years yeah. <laughs> barely know anyone baking for neighbors is my way to spread holiday cheer yes your love language and show uh, everyone what a good person i am exactly exactly and we included a little card our phone numbers say hit us up uh so total we gave and we put them in little bags little like dollar tree gift bags and walked around and just put them in front of our neighbor's uh, houses. We're, we're in a, a condominium complex. Uh, we gave away seven total banana breads. Uh, and what, what what response did we get? Well, two were returned. They, they were there after a couple of days. So maybe <laughs> they were on vacation. I, I would be a little sus of a this <laughs> yeah. rando gift bag outside my door. Food. You don't want food sitting outside for a couple of days. Right. And then for your neighbor to find it. So... We, uh, we sneakily, grabbed sneakily grabbed the bags that had been sitting out and took them back. Returned to sender and we re-gifted them. No. <laughs> um, so we got, within the first day, yeah. we got two texts. Yes. Two different neighbors. Yeah. Um, one was from our 
directly next door person. Her name's Allison. Yes. And we've said hello. We say hello when we see each other. Yeah. We know her brother, Andrew. Uh, they have a couple dogs. A brother you, and sister living together. Hmm. You one time went in their garage oh, yeah. and asked if they had a saw. They used their and saw. And they helped you saw something. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> they had this giant band saw that I needed. Because I'm a real man. Uh, but we already knew them. So really we knew care. them, but something nice is... Oh, we put our phone number in every card. Yeah. So... Allison texted. texted. I was able to save her number. So now we have each other's digits. Yeah. And then a second person texted. Yeah. Said, thank you for the banana bread. Didn't say what unit they live in. Right. But signed their name. Yes. Sakuro. Sakuro. That's it. Is that their first name? Is that your last name? Yeah. Are you woman? Are you man? And Sakuro also texted you on New Year's. Yeah. Happy New Year's. About a, a, about two weeks later, yeah. after the banana bread delivery, I got a Happy New Year text as well. And you haven't heard from them since, right? No, not since. And I, so it's been four months now. Yeah. We still don't know who they are. Right. We we know nothing about this mystery neighbor. Yeah. Third person uh, was IRL in person. Uh, actually, downstairs, you had just given me a haircut. And I was shirtless because I take on my shirt. That's how I do it in great clips too. <laughs> Strip off my shirt and say, "Give me the, give me the '90s uh, Asian boy fade." Hmm. Um, but I was shirtless, and it was Debbie from yonder over there, and she walks by. She's like, "Hey, the banana bread was really good." I was like, "Oh, thanks, Debbie." And this was a couple months after the banana bread, right? So unexpected. Yeah. But responses keep trickling in. Yeah. But just the other day knock on the door which is it's either amazon or it could be a young man who wants to come in remember that yes <laughs> it was scary scary stranger why. knocking on the door yeah it was like early saturday morning i go downstairs i don't know why i open the door but i open it and it was a young gentleman out of breath and i was like what's up and he goes is steve home i forget the name he used and i was like uh, no steve doesn't live here and then he, he kind of looked off and then he looked back at me and he goes, can I come in? And I was like, uh, no. <laughs> and I closed the door and I locked it. Scary. Heck of scary. I'm an idiot for doing that. Uh, but uh, doorbell rang. I went to go get it. And it was Allison. And uh, so Allison and Andrew are... Brother and sister. Right. But they're oh, origin... Andrew's, Andrew sounds like he has an Irish accent. Okay. When I talk to Allison, I don't hear it. But uh, you you do. You've heard her. You think she has a little accent, too? Yeah, dude. <laughs> she sounds like uh, the, the lady in Banshees of Inishirin, which is a really slow, plotting, boring movie, and I can't believe it was nominated for Best Picture. But um, so she had a plate of cookies, and she's like, oh, I just baked some cookies for you. <laughs> I'm like, I love that accent. Like, one of the best things about Below Deck is the accent, yeah. dude. Like English and Aussie, they, and they don't say so. They say, say. I bake you some bread. <laughs> they don't say party. They say pa a. It's just, and the only way is Essex. Like, uh, I, any accent, any showing of being a cosmopolitan or just foreign or different, unique. I love it. But yeah. she, she's like a, a kind of soft spoken. Uh, whatever Scottish Irish, but ah, I baked some cookies for you. I said, Oh, thanks. And so she hands me the plate, closed the door. And so, first thing I thought, I, I looked out the people, I was like, Is she giving cookies out to everyone? I thought, yeah. Are we are we uh, not special? Is she just doing this? Because we, but then I thought, Well, that's what we did with banana bread, <laughs> yeah. But we did it, see, we did it for our neighbors, yeah. So, is she, this is reciprocating the baking, the friendship. Ah, uh, yeah. That's why I'm not... I wonder if she did it for just us or for everybody. It was just us. Well, because I watched her and I was like, if she has like a cart full of... Like, if, she, if she's like out here like the Girl Scout cookies, it's not so special. But she didn't. She just walked off. And I was like, okay, good. Because we, <laughs> when we were walking around with both bags of banana bread, probably we looked like nut jobs. Um, but uh, so there were three kinds of cookies. Uh, one was... Uh, chocolate chip oatmeal which i was a big fan of uh and then my favorite was and then there was one that was like chocolate on chocolate which i'm yeah we don't like 
chocolate as a base. Yeah, we're not huge chocolate fans. Yeah. Like, use vanilla as your base. And I'm speaking specifically of ice cream, but start with vanilla and then throw other stuff in there. But when you start with chocolate, it's just a turnoff to me. Yeah. Like, they're, they're like, this is triple chocolate. They start with chocolate, they throw chocolate chips in there, and then they throw uh, mint chocolate. It's like, oh. Chocolate's overrated. We get it. It's chocolate. It's chocolate. Um, but anyways, what am I talking about? <laughs> You're angry about chocolate. Oh, yeah. I'm so angry about triple chocolate. <laughs> I hate that description. <laughs> Quadrupled chocolate. Um, but, oh, she made uh, these, uh, they had like an orange frosting on them. Yeah, the, it was a sugar cookie. Yes. With an orange frosting. Yeah. And I liked it. Orange frosting, okay, but I thought that cookie was like hecka crumbly. It was so good. Sugar cookies with frosting are so good. Yeah. Um, I love orange. It had yeah. a, you could taste the orange flavor. Yeah. So those were by far my favorite. Yeah. But I, I didn't eat the chocolate on chocolate, and then you threw them away because we had yeah. enough. And it was like, <laughs> Do we really need all these cookies. But then we saw her a few days later, and I go, and I said, hey, those... Orange frosting cookies were bussing. First of all, I don't know if she knows what that means. <laughs> Is she on the TikTok? Like Lennox and Lunar? But I was like, oh, I shouldn't have said that. That was dumb. <laughs> and then and then she goes, oh, did you try all of them? <laughs> and I paused for five seconds because I was like, well, I didn't try the chocolate. But I don't want her to think I didn't try the chocolate. So I was like. Going through all these scenarios, I felt bad. And and just the, the giant four seconds of dead air, five seconds of dead air, <laughs> I was like, oh, this is going to come out bad. And I go, yeah, I, I tried all of them. Oh, jeez. I lied. Oh. Vince lied. People died. Um, but, yeah. She's a neighbor. Is she your friend yet? She's not. A, how do I make her my friend? I don't know. I, mean, I don't know. I see her all the time yeah. out walking her dog. Oh, yeah. We pass each other like once a week, yeah. sometimes twice a week I see yeah. her. We see her in the park all the time. Always yeah. say hi. Yeah. How, we gotta, how do we take it to the next level? We just got to, you know what? We got to get, we just got to be in the park with some brewskis and a cooler. Okay. This is what I got. This is good. This is going <laughs> to sound creepy, but we got to like get her schedule so when when <laughs> we'll know exactly when she's in the okay. park and we'll we'll play we'll plan this all happenstance like oh hello you're walking your dog if all of our neighbors like they're our num- my number one pick for us to be friends with they're totally. similar to age totally. to us yeah they're right next door yeah they have a cool dog cute dog they have accents yeah oh my gosh those accents so like should i invite her to, invite her to go to the library with me well should i invite her to <laughs> what if she's illiterate <laughs> <laughs> i got um, nothing i don't know how to make friends <laughs> oh my gosh her accent is adorable and then his accent so manly i love it's accents. so attractive i know <laughs> on both men and women anyways when uh every once in a while when our parasocial podcast friend megan rage has her husband brett on his english accent oh and when she imi- when she imitates him, yeah, talk about conversations they've had. It's so fun. Yeah, it's so exotic. It's so cool. And here I am. I just I'm, I I talk like a regular American. I I'm know. So boring. I am too. I'm so boring. Anyways, well, are we done, honey? We're done with this boring American podcast. Okay, we're done. Oh, bye bye.